Welcome to the final video for today of Triple Grace. My name is Michael, I'm the founder of Triple Grace and the Righteous Pass Movement Foundation. And in this topic we will talk about Acts 2.0, the double portion anointing. Why will we walk in a double portion? Where do we see an image in the scripture that describes our pass at the end? We see it through the ascension of Elijah when he was taken in the fiery chariot to heaven. Before he was going, Elisha, his apprentice, were asking him, give me, your, give me a double portion when you will go. And the moment when Elijah was taken, what we now understand will be most like the years of bending of time. Then that mantle will fall to him, but it was split into two. So a double portion was coming down to him. Now we understand that the ascension of Elijah was a forerunner to the ascension of Jesus Christ. And we also understand that the apostles in the Acts 1, Acts 1.0, that the apostles in the book of Acts received then thereafter also his, their portions so that they could go out and establish Christianity in the world or at least in the Mediterranean area for that time. But now, brothers and sisters, we are now standing at an open door that will make us end-time apostles for the great harvest a worldwide harvest, a harvest that will lead us to the Millennium Kingdom. And so the Lord has said that we will walk in the former and the latter way. A double portion again, but even stronger and bigger now, because the harvest is so much bigger now. We will become end-time apostles that will walk in the former and the latter way. But now, when we say we will become Acts 2.0, and we will walk as the first apostle has done, but in a bigger anointing, then what is the former reign? The former reign are the first apostles who will come and tend to us. Yes, you heard me right. The first apostles will come to tend to us. The dead in Christ will rise. I have made videos about that. At the time of the escape of the innocent, the children under the age of accountability and everybody who cannot fend for themselves, people who are sick, disabled, whatever. And maybe a very few portion of the Bride of Christ, who have made them totally ready and spotless. At that time the dead in Christ will rise, because the dead in Christ will rise first. And from this rising of the dead will come forth the former reign. And the Apostles of old will come to help and tend to us. John will tend to us, Peter will tend to us, all the other apostles, they will all come and tend to us. So that we can use their experience, that we can receive their knowledge and everything what they have gone through, so that we have already that understanding of Acts 1.0. And then we will also receive now, through the holy fire, through the fiery tongues, our letter rain. And so we will walk in the former and the latter reign together as chosen vessels of the kingdom of heaven as ambassadors on earth bringing in the harvest of the ages not in the way churches are doing it now not in the way of home churches not even that on the new path establishing holy places in the nations training and teaching new disciples 
new royal priest in the line of David, and then together in unity going out into our neighborhoods to show forth examples, to walk as an image of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Not only what we think, not only spiritual, what the churches are doing. No, in the physical manifestation, the people will see us as an image of Jesus, a true image of Jesus. And we will look into our neighborhoods through the eyes of Jesus, because the two will have become one. And you will walk in the former and the latter ring. And you will do even greater exploits than Jesus has done. Acts 2.0 is the harvesting group. Acts 2.0 are the end time apostles. Acts 2.0 are the royal priests in the line of David. The image of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The true bride walking. Walking for Jesus, for the husband. Brothers and sisters, the time has come. The time has come for God's kingdom anointing to fall onto us. But it will not fall onto you if you remain in your churches in the Babylon and in the world. It will fall on you when you are willing to step on the new path that will lead you to Mount Zion. You need to focus 100% on the kingdom of heaven. And you must be willing willing to go out every day into your neighborhoods together to bring forth the examples of the kingdom of heaven. How do you introduce the kingdom of heaven if you are not living it? You can only introduce the kingdom of heaven when you live it as Jesus has done. Jesus was a true son to the Father. And only when you become a true son or daughter to the Father, then you will reach him. That's the reason why Jesus said that he is the way. True son or daughtership with the Father will not come from a pure spiritual connection, what the churches are telling you. It's not coming through prayers. It's not even coming through repentance. That all has to be done before. You have to clean yourself before you can put on the dress of the royal priests. But when you have repented and you have done all this in the past and you are ready, then you can now put on the, the robe of the royal priests. And then you can go into the holy place and then you can serve God as never before. And God will walk with you in these places. These holy places are also called the womb of God, where the end time apostles will be birthed, where the man child and his body will be birthed right now for such a time as this. God's kingdom anointing is here and will fall on you. Do not be deceived by other voices who are telling you, it's impossible. I have heard voices telling me, it's impossible. God cannot connect with us. It is impossible that Jesus will walk for 40 days physically here on earth. And then I say, I hear you, Pharisees. I hear your voices, Pharisees, from old, coming back again, saying it is impossible. The Messiah would come, not come in this way. He must come in our way. He must fulfill our agenda. Otherwise, we cannot accept him and we reject him as the Antichrist. Woe to you. God is saying, woe to you. Woe to you, religious leaders, if you have a thinking like that. Woe to you when you put the kingdom of God in a box. Woe to you. It would be better that, um, that you have a millstone around your neck and be drawn into the water than to come to the point when the Lamb and the Father will sit on the throne on Mount Zion and the rest of the Lamb will start. The God's kingdom anointing will fall onto you. Why? Because the kingdom is already here. And what we are doing here at Triple Grace is the dress rehearsal, the forerunner of the Millennium Kingdom, preparing the way for the Lord to come this time as a king over the earth, showing for us great face and even greater light. We will walk in that light. And every day I will connect to my true Father in heaven. And every day I will talk about his kingdom, 
And every day I will gather the people together. And every day I will turn the hearts of the children back to the Father. And every day I will call you out of the world, Babylon, and the churches. And every day I will lift you up, no matter how small my strength is, I will lift you up to the new level of intimacy with God the Father. And every day I want to make you closer and closer to become an image of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. God's kingdom anointing will fall on you. You are prepared, you are ready, but you need to step through that open door onto the new path, onto the pasture that God the Father has for you. This is not a time anymore where you can say, okay, maybe I think about it, maybe next year, maybe the year after. The kingdom is here. You have to decide now. Either to be part of it or to be left behind in the world. And when you stay in the world, you will face a complete and whole wrath of the Antichrist without protection. And you will become a murderer in the best way, in the best sense. When you still stay to, um, to your face, then you will become a murderer. But I tell you, most of you will accept the mark. You, s you will just find an excuse. You will say, oh, this is not the mark of the beast. Maybe the mark of the beast will come a few years later. And then you will take it. Because you are not under the protection. You are not in the holy places. You are not walking that path. You are not a true son and daughter of the Most High. You have not reached the new level. You are not walking as Jesus did here on earth. God's kingdom anointing is for your taking right now. Walk with us. Step forward through that open door. Become part of the 80th group of holiness. What is holding you back? Your church pastor? A self-proclaimed bishop? Or apostle? No. Listen to the voice of the Father, God Almighty himself. And when Jesus knocks at your door, then open it immediately, without any doubt, but with childlike faith and say, Yes, Lord, I am here to become an image of you. I am ready. I am so ready, Lord. And then you will receive God's kingdom anointing. Walk with us in the 80th group of holiness, the Royal Priesthood Academy. Walk with us that new path. I'm calling you, and this is what I'm doing every day now. I'm calling you into the light. You will experience the physical manifestation of the light of the kingdom of heaven on our path. I'm calling you into the light. That includes that you need to accept the status of the kingdom of heaven that rejoices the heart. Love, mercy and compassion. And not only accept them, but apply them into your life. Change your old ways. Come out of the world, Babylon and the churches. Make a great step. Put on the clothes of the royal priest in the line of David. Walk as Jesus did. Serve as never before. And have access to the holy place. This is your time to receive God's kingdom anointing. It will not come in the way that you have sought. Definitely not. When you are already part of Triple Grace, you know that many of my messages are not the way that you were thinking. It is not coming as you may have sought. But nevertheless, everything what is written in the scripture will be fulfilled to the dot. Not in the way that you saw it, not maybe through a supernatural miracle, not maybe through the rapture of the church at this time, what is of course not the right doctrine. We know that. Not through whatever you have thought through your churches that suddenly the doors will open and all the 
kingdom anointing will flow into your church? Most likely not. But there is a new way, and that is put in front of you. The door is open, you need to walk it. And it's a golden path that will lead to Mount Zion, where you will be ruptured into paradise. It's a six seal. To stand before the throne of God, and God will say, Well done, my true and faithful servants, well done. But as it was in the first Exodus, we need to walk together. We need to join forces. Nobody should be left behind. Nobody should should walk alone. We all have to come together. And therefore, we have established the 88 group of holiness so that we can become a holy nation and a royal priesthood. As it is written in the scripture in 2 Peter 9. Become a holy nation and a royal priesthood for the kingdom of heaven, for the glory of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and in the power of the Father. Let us all walk through that open door onto the new path. Let us connect to the first holy place through the 88 group of holiness together with the Father so that he will instruct us, guide us to the right people, Lead us to the places where we have to go to. And that we can bring in the harvest of the ages. Seek the lost sheep and bring them back into his fold. And all this we will do in his name and in his name alone. Brothers and sisters, be blessed in the name of the Most High. And in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, and in the name of the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh, be blessed. Join today the 88 group of holiness and walk with us together so that the kingdom anointing can fall onto you right now. Amen and Amen. Maranath.